Hello and welcome to the Remy Fibers Podcast, a podcast about knitting and crochet hosted by me, Jillian. If you're new here, welcome. And if you're a returner, thank you so much for coming back to my channel. We went to Stitches West. I'm going to take you through everything, all the yarn, all the fabulousness. I'm going to show you the footage. I was obsessed. It was so fun. I'll tell you all about it in just a little bit. But if you're new here, I live in Northern California with my husband and dog Benny. I love everything yarn related and I hope you stay for my yarn journey. So let's get right into it. I came back just a few hours ago and I loved my time there. I wish I could go back and technically I probably could, but I'm not going to. I'll show you what I picked up there. And surprisingly, I didn't do a lot of shopping. I went with two of my co-workers. Thank you, Haley and Nick. It was really nice to go with people, especially people who have appreciation of sheep and wool and yarn. And there was surprisingly more people this year than last year when I went. I think last year was the first time it was hosted in Sacramento and it was the first time since the shutdown with the pandemic so there was definitely more crowds much livelier maybe even more vendors I'm not sure what the numbers were compared to last year's vendors but there was quite a bit I feel like this year there was more variety of what was being sold there was a vendor for buttons vendors for more wool and roving maybe because I spin now and that's what I was looking for. My eye just gravitated more to the wool and the roving and all of the spinning items. But I'll show you some footage now. I think it's about four minutes. So I will come back to you in just a little bit. So believe it or not, I only made one purchase at one vendor. Actually, I would say two purchases, but from one vendor shop. And my goal this year was to go without a budget. Obviously, I wanted to be mindful of my spending. 
but to not put so much pressure on myself as to what I was going to create or buy and because I know that I still have quite a bit of stash I know I didn't really want to get too much additional yarn just because I know it's going to take me some more time to create what I have already so my goal was to focus on getting wool to spin with because I really want to practice my spinning. I saw somewhere that they recommended at least 15 minutes a day. And once I get started spinning, I can't stop. So I know I will definitely surpass 15 minutes a day, but I ran out of all my wool and that's something that I want to work on because I want to eventually knit a garment with what I spin. So let me show you what I purchased today. So this is the cute shopping bag that it came with, but let me save you the sounds and open it up right now. So the shop that I purchased my wool from is called Goody Supply Company, Artisanal Textiles and Treasures. And even though Jennifer is a dyer and sells yarn and wool, she is from Los Angeles, California. And she even told me that there's a spinning guild that they do virtual, it's in person and virtual that I can join. And so this is a little postcard of the spinning guild. So I definitely want to do this. I want to go to spinning on Zoom or whatever virtual platform they have. And it says, come join us, all levels welcome. They even have people from all around the United States joining in on their Zoom. And I can include the information below if you want to join me. We can learn and improve on our spinning on a virtual platform. So let me show you what I got. The first thing I was gravitated to was this beautiful pink sparkly yarn. This is called Funfetti. It's 70% South American wool, 17.5% viscose, and 12.5% Firestar. This is 4 ounces of wool. And my goal is to make a top with it. So I did buy 2. So this is 8 ounces. I'm still new to spinning and I'm not sure if this is going to be enough to create a sweater or a top. I was kind of second guessing myself if I should have gotten more, but we'll see what 8 ounces brings me. So we'll see. We'll see. Hopefully it does. But I just love the sparkle, the little nubs of color inside. Very sparkly, very me, and my pinks and purples. And the logo is so cute. My friend got this logo in an enamel pin. So I just really like it. Let me know what you think about this wool down below. One question one of my friends asked me was, how do you start spinning with this? And I explained to them that because it's braided, I would have to unravel it, which is right here. And once I unravel it, it kind of just forms this long strand. And normally what I like to do is to pre-draft what I'm about to start spinning with. So I would pull it apart. And you can see as you pull it apart, it gets thinner. And I will pull it apart into pieces just so that it's easier for me to spin and have a more consistent spin. So that I'm able to apply the weight of yarn that I'm hoping to get. So I have no plans. I haven't thought that far into it. But the colors are screaming me. So next up, I bought two more braids from the Goody Supply Co. And you're going to be a little bit shocked because these are not normally colors that I gravitate to. But wait till I show you how it looks. Look at this magical beautifulness. It reminds me of hair with magic strands in it. And my friend said it looks like a horse tail, horse mane with glitter inside. But I just think it's so pretty. It's so magical. The colors and the pops inside are just so stunning. And I have two of these. And like I said, I don't know if this is going to be enough to make a top. This is 8 ounces. And really what determines if it's going to be enough is how thin I spin and how much yardage I'm able to get out of this. So we'll see. And this is also 72% Shetland, 14% Firestar, and 14% Sari Silk. Both at 4 ounces a braid, so a total of 8 ounces. And I'm just really excited to see how this is going to work up. And then I was thinking a little bit ago, if this isn't enough for a garment. One of the vendors that I met at Stitches West told me that she combined different colors of braids to make a really colorful sweater. So these are not bad combinations. If I was to make it work or plan it a certain way, I think that would be really cute. 16 ounces might be enough might be enough but because i'm new to spinning and i'm new to how much yardage i'm actually yielding when i'm plying and making things 
it's just going to have to be trial and error and see where I get to see next time I buy wool is this actually enough do I need to buy three more two more and kind of just trial and error through my learning process but this is all that I got from Stitches West. I had self-control, I have self-constraint. It was really hard because there were a lot of colors that i never seen before. There was a lot of lavenders, hot neon pinks, neon greens. Those things are something that I've just really been feeling and things that I've been wanting to create with. But right now my productivity is not as fast as it has been prior, so I didn't want to overwhelm myself with getting more yarn or getting too much that I can actually tackle. So I'm happy with this. I'm happy that this is going to take me quite a bit to spin with. The last time that I got yarn, just four ounces worth, it took me a few months. So this will definitely keep me busy. And hopefully I can take you through the process from start to finish to see what I actually spin this up with. Overall, I had a really great time at Stitches West. I would definitely 10 out of 10 recommend this festival if you're on the west coast if you're not in the west coast i would say just find something that's closer to your area i know that a lot of people enjoy flying out to conferences or festivals but i think you can pretty much find something similar in any area that you live in because it can get expensive with flights and hotels so even though i really recommend it if it's driving distance if you're not too far then 100 percent but if not i would say finding something that's closer to you and i know that there's some spread out throughout the united states and i also use just a random search festivals near me and put my zip code to help me find what events are happening in my local area just because the way these flights prices are going that's something that i wouldn't really recommend this festival to if it's going to be too much out of your budget stitches west had a optional face mask covering so last year it was mandatory this year it was optional because they're following state guidelines where they're not mandating masking anymore and so a lot of people were uncomfortable about that i think more so on social media but at the actual conference people didn't really wear masks and then those who were wearing masks there wasn't any issue or any uncomfortableness so i think that overall i felt safe and i felt comfortable at the conference or at the yarn festival so hopefully that might be helpful to you if you're thinking about large crowds larger places where more people are gathering good thing that there was a starbucks located at the conference expo center because as soon as we were getting ready to leave it was pouring rain and i got a honey citrus mint tea that is my favorite tea at starbucks but sadly they were out of it so i had to get a caramel macchiato my favorite and then afterwards we headed over to a local pizza shop that had great ratings great reviews and it was a vegetarian mixed pizza so so good but i'm really thankful to have been able to go to stitches west i remember being on the east coast when i was living there hearing about it and i said oh that's too far i don't think i would ever take a flight and pay for a hotel to go to a yarn festival but i might maybe in the future i might think of it i think it's really fun especially when you have other yarn friends to go with and explore and even see the other sightseeing things the area has to offer good thing today was only a 20 minute drive and i'm so thankful for my two friends able to come with me see my yarn obsession as well as encouraging me to buy all of the yarn goodness but i do hope you enjoy the content definitely let me know what questions or comments you have about the festival if this is something that you would like to join in the future but now we are going to move on to finished objects and what i'm working on so of course going to Stitches West I had to plan on my knit outfit and I decided to wear the Rocket Tee by Tannis Fiber Arts and the reason why I'm not wearing it right now was because I was definitely overheating. I wore this, I wore it with the Felix cardigan, I wore hand knit socks and I had a coat on like a light jacket and I was really second guessing this because I started overheating. So I wore this top and then I also had this open and this is the Felix Cardigan by Amy Christophers. So this is my go-to, I love this. So as for finished objects, I was able to finish my cotton rag. I had some leftover yarn so I just made a magic ring to add it. So I don't waste any yarn, but this one actually just sits on the stove. So when I finish washing my hands, I can just dry my hands, but it's actually really soft and I really love seeing it in the kitchen. Someone did make a comment last time that they're, they wouldn't be able to do cotton rags, but you could. They're just like towels. They dry extremely fast if it's 100% cotton. There's no issues with it drying overnight. 
similar to a regular towel. And the next finished object that I have is 99% finished. So I showed this last week and I was telling you that I wasn't really too happy with it. This is the Fall Pullover Sweater by Juanita Juncker. This is the second time that I've made it, but this time I made it longer so it wasn't cropped and I made it short sleeves. But I just wasn't feeling it so I ripped out some of the length so it can go back to being cropped and I also added sleeves. So this is how it's looking. I can also try it on for you, but I extended the sleeves. I made it cropped again and I also added some pale pink edging to the neckline, the sleeves, and the bottom edge and I think it just really gives it an elegant, vintage, very beautiful look. And the reason why I say it's 99% done is because I decided that I wanted to add a flower motif to the neckline and I think I want to add a few flowers. So this one is not secured in just because I didn't know if I wanted to do a cluster of flowers here and just kind of make some design going down or if I just wanted to put them in a row. So they're not, this one's not completely tied down but I think it's really cute so let me try it out for you. So this is how it looks. It is not blocked yet just because I want to finish the flower motif. It is three quarter sleeves and I ran out of all of the yarn. And then I did do a more cropped look even though I didn't want a cropped look. But I think because the way the design is written, it looks more stylish cropped. So I was thinking if I do wear this then to pair it with a dress. A dress I don't have. But just trying to get my creativity flowing because I don't like when I'm wearing jeans and then your stomach's exposed or your tank top is exposed. And then this is the little flower that I would attach to the top of the shirt. So comment down below if you think I should do like a cluster of flowers kind of going down or if I should just do like a flower here, a flower here, and a flower there at the top of the neckline. But I love the color, I love the addition of the light pink, and I think it's more of a everyday piece. This yarn is by Terrapin Fiberworks. She recently just released new colors, new bases. It's so stunning. This is 100% cotton and this is the Atlantic fingering. So I love her yarn. I love working with it. I love the color of it. And she has such beautiful colors for more hot climate, summer climate weather. So I know that a lot of the patterns that are being released are mohair double, bulky, cold climates so the way that this climate world is going definitely check out terrapin fibers because she has fibers that can be worn through the spring through the summer so you can continue to knit and crochet even when the heat is upon us so i love it this is so cute you imagine even a flower in your hair a flower earring but i want to make more of these it just was a little bit tedious it wasn't difficult but i just need to get the energy to make them and then attach them that is all that i have for finished objects the last thing i wanted to show you before we end today's video i hope i didn't drop a stitch i stopped in the middle of the row <laughs> my ranunculus this is yarn by archaic fibers that i picked up at the black squirrel shop in oakland in berkeley in berkeley california so this is how it's looking and i'm already getting to the part where it's the second repeat of the design element and i'm in a knit row so i actually can talk while working on this row normally i don't like to stop in the middle of a row but when it says just knit i i could afford to do that so overall i had a great time yarn shopping mostly for wool i do want to visit a local mill to me i emailed them and i was like i want to learn everything that you know so if i can volunteer my time if i can help out with whatever you need administrative things tell me because i want to know all the things that it comes to a mill and wool and how the machines work is just so fascinating to me i would highly encourage you to start looking at yarn festivals near you knitting retreats near you because this is the time that a lot of people are starting to plan things so there is a local i wouldn't say it's a farm but there's a website that i found that they're doing some knitting retreats not too far from me it's a one day affordable type thing 
and they're also doing yoga and yarn yoga and spinning and I'm here for it all. I also will be visiting a local yarn shop. I visited once during the Wine Country Yarn Hop. And this yarn shop is going to be having a book signing as well as an author presentation by Peggy Orenstein. And the book that she wrote is a national best-selling book called Unraveling. It's a comical and empowering memoir where she journeys to make a sweater from complete start to finish shearing, spinning yarn, dyeing wool, and in this process she discovers how we find our deepest selves through craft. So I'm going to go, I'm going to get a book, I'm going to get it signed, and it was also in my local library but I'm just going to wait to actually see her, meet her, hear what she has to say because I want that life and I want sheep. But I think that even though I haven't read the book yet, if you're into all of this sheep shearing dyeing spinning definitely check out her book and let me know what you think and if you've already read it let me know as well i just want to do all the sheepy things it's just so relaxing so fun and it really gets me excited because i'm learning so much from what happens before yarn becomes yarn kind of thing like what happens before it becomes this and that's something that really excites me and i'm sure it excites you all and i'll make sure that i take you with me and we can have these adventures together but thank you so much for tuning in i hope that you enjoyed today's video coming along with me to stitches west i hope that you and your family are happy healthy and safe and i hope to talk to you next week take care bye